those who marry young women after adulthood always live in an illusionary world of suspicion. They have a natural aversion to strangers. Pulvatariyar had more reason for such disgust. He didn't like it at all when Nandini stood in front of him and started talking. At the same time he could not scold Nandini. So in response to Nandini's question, Queen. There are so many people in this world that we don't know. Can't we see and know everyone? So we have no loss. Said. On hearing this, Parthipendra said, Sir. There is no loss for Padamakishi, the treasure king of Kolonad, because he does not know me, the loss is for me. Therefore, I declare myself, Lady. They will call me Parthipendra Pallava. He said that. Oh. Really? I've heard their name. Said Nandini. Parthipendra. Why did you give up awards and only mention your name? When did you become so self-contained and humble? Nandini. This is not just Parthipendra. Parthipendra Pallava who won Venji and Kalingam and was crowned Virapandian. Said Palyavatarayar in a mocking voice. Nandini's face darkened like a stormy sky for a moment. Two lightning bolts appeared from both her eyes and flashed and disappeared immediately. The next moment she was laughing uproariously. Sir! How many claim the proud title of Virapandian? Is there any account of that? She asked. Ma'am! The officer said that out of admiration for me. Actually I do not deserve that award. The honor of Virapandian's head belongs to Adithakari Kalar alone. Why do you say that, father? Don't you want a little share in the glory of beating a dead snake? Palyavatarayar asked in a mocking voice and then laughed. No, O oh king. No. Aditha Kari Kalar did not kill the dead snake. Virapandian was a fully alive snake when he swung the sword. A Devalakata Mahini like monkey stood before him and begged to save his life. If I had been the one who swung the sword, I would have thrown the sword away immediately. Virapandian survived. Gone. Parthipendran replied to Palyavetarayar. But his eyes fixed on Nandi's face. Nandini realizes that the conversation is getting dangerous. Looking back at the destroyer, he said, Nada. What is the old story for now? Let's inquire as to what brought him here. She said. Palyavetarayar immediately said, Yes brother. Don't tell me your old story. When did you leave Kanchi? Where did you travel to? What was the reason you came down here? He asked. Parthibendra, who had fainted at the sight of Nandini, also remembered what he had come for. Sir. I must be excused. I have been talking. I have come with very important news. A terrible news that can drown the Chola country in a sea of misery, Prince Arul Lingavarmar, who was leaving with me on this ship from Elam, jumped into the sea when the whirlwind blew. I do not know what happened to him. I came here to see if he might have stepped aside. Said Parthipendra. Before he could finish, aha! What did you say? Screamed the reaper. He fell to the ground like a tree uprooted by a whirlwind. Parthipendra rushed to carry him. Nandini stood across and removed his outstretched hand. She sat next to the farmer and took his head on her lap. Water! Water! She shouted. The maid was fetching water from the tent. Some more soldiers, the lighthouse keeper and his family came running. Nandini, with great majesty, motioned them all to stand aside. She splashed water on the face of the reaper. Nada. Nada. She called in a charming voice. The old man's eyes opened for a few minutes. I immediately remembered. He sat up suddenly. Nandini. Is it true what fell into my ears a little while ago? What did this Pallava say? Didn't he say that the sea had taken away the wealth of Pani? When that valiant boy was a small child, I carried him with these hands and held him on my shoulders for joy. It was with these hands that I sealed the order to bring him captive. Alas! Chola country me! What do you think about? Said Pulavetarayar and hit his head. 
Nandini had never seen that heroic old man lamenting in such a troubled way, no one has seen it. Nada. Don't panic. He hasn't told the whole story yet. Wouldn't it be better to listen to the whole thing and think about what to do above? Said Nandini. Yes, you are right. Parthapendra. Tell me quickly. Didn't you say Pawnee's Selvar had drowned in the sea? Is that true? Or are you imagining something malicious? Don't play with a hungry tiger? Beware! The older sister roared with tears in her eyes. Sir! I am sorry. I did not say that the prince was dead. I could not believe that such a terrible loss should have been inflicted on this ship. I only said that he jumped from my ship when the storm was raging. By the grace of God he might have survived. He might have come to this shore and retreated. Here to sea with that desire. I came. He jumped into the sea when the storm hit. What for? Why did he jump? Why did he board your ship? What were you doing when he jumped? Asked the king of Palvur in a panic. Nandini interrupted, Sir. Let me tell you in detail why he went to Sri Lanka. She said. Yes. Tell it like it is. If you don't tell the truth, you won't escape alive. You. The reaper gritted his teeth. O king. I am not in the habit of telling anything but the truth. Even if I want to lie, my tongue will not tell. Listen. News has reached the city of Kanchi that they, the Samboarias of Kadambur, and many others are plotting against the Chola clan. Lie. Lie. Absolutely lie. Let the news be false. That is what I want. I told the news that reached Kanchi. Thiruko Valar Malayaman and Aditha Kari Kalar sent me to Elam. They sent me to bring Aromas Hivarmar with them. Thus beginning, Parthapendran narrated in detail everything that had happened since his arrival in Sri Lanka, to the best of his knowledge. When the story was over, Palyavatarayar said, My God! Great calamity has come to the Chola nation. It has come because of this sinner. Was it not I who gave the order to bring the prince as a prisoner? Was it not I who sent the pieces of wood? He shouted. O king! Your fault is nothing, would not the prince have boarded this man's ship and sailed to Kanchi, even if you had not given the order? Do not fret in vain. There is an act of fate above our actions. A and D. Nandini suddenly stopped speaking aloud at this point and said something in the ear of the Palovetare, the reaper's face brightened slightly. Yes yes. It didn't occur to me. Said. Then looking at Parthapendra, he said, Palava. I will go to your ship and inspect it. Till then you must stay here. Do not try to escape. I will order my soldiers to kill you with a veil immediately if you try to run. Beware. Don't die with a wound in your back. Your lineage, your lineage. Said. Vandanam, sir. I have no intention of running away. If I had such an intention, none of your soldiers could stop me. Nor do I intend to injure my back. Paul Avon said. King. Don't worry about him. I will take care of him. If he escapes, this knife will go straight into his chest. You go calmly and check the ship. Ask the sailors too, whether what he said is true, said Nandini and took a small knife from her waist. Queen. Why do you have this responsibility? Go inside the tent. Or stay in the martyr's house. Our soldiers will take care of him. Or I will take him to the ship with me. I'm not coming, sir. If I come with them, they'll be suspicious again. You'll think the sailors have testified for me. I won't move from this place. Go without worry. Nada. I'm going to stay here until you get back from the ship. I'll keep watching over you. Said Nandini. Then she said, in the ear of Palyavatarayar, who has seen that he has come here to investigate something, or what? And the news about the prince must not be known to anyone until they return. Palyavatarayar shook his head and got into the boat. The boat headed towards the forest. 
Nandini was looking at the boat till the boat went some distance. At the same time, she realized that Parthipendra was looking at her face without blinking. She suddenly turned to him. She expected Parthibendra to bow his head in shame. But will the beetle, having seen the honey flower, return beyond? Nandini took out a small sharp knife and pointed it again, be careful. Don't try to run away. She said. Goddess. Shall I frighten you with a knife? Or run away? How can a fish caught in a net run away? Caught in the net they have spread. What, sir, are you saying? Are you calling me a woman of the Webangar clan? If this comes to the ears of the king of Palvur. I am not concerned about that, goddess. But I am not referring to the fishing net. I am referring to the net of passion that their fingers spread. Chi Chi. How dare you? It's not a disadvantage to be a netizen clan girl. Are you calling me a schemer to seduce men? I'm sorry. I didn't say such a joke. You want to spread a web for yourself, don't you? Does a spider weave a web to catch flies? It weaves a web to live in. The flies fall by themselves. Are you calling me a spider? Am I that scary? Wrong. Wrong. I should have said the lamp. The lamp is not burning for the insects. The lamp burns and casts light around itself and makes it a torch. The strange insects mistake it for fruit and fall off. A little blow of wind blows the lamp and the lamp goes out. You can even blow it out with your mouth. That's the power of the lamp. The lamp will go out, but who can extinguish the full moon? The full moon did not rise for the king of the sea. The moon rises according to natural law. Its cold moonlight spreads its light for heaven and earth to enjoy. But look at the demonic sea. Why should the sea be so agitated at the sight of the full moon? Why should it yawn for the unattainable fruit? I have heard so much about the poetic taste and imagination of the Pallava kings. Now I feel them all to be true. Until yesterday I did not believe what I read and heard in the Puranas and Kavyas, only today do I believe. What are you talking about? I have heard that some of those in female form have the power to hold the heavens and the earth under their feet. The Asuras who took the elixir from the sea of milk were deceived by Mahini when they were about to drink the elixir. The Sundopa Sunders were beaten to death for the sake of a woman. Vishvamitra was ruined by Manakai. Gon fell into Madhavi's enticing trap. Dasarada he sent Rama to the forest for Kaikiai. Because of the Queen of Egypt, the great Roman Empire began to crumble. Enough sir. Enough. Why do you give all these examples? I don't know, goddess. I really don't know who I'm setting an example for. If you're giving me an example, you can't make a bigger mistake than that. Nothing wrong. Their power was less than their power that day. Your speech is against you. How so, goddess? I sent the king of Pavur to the ship on purpose, to ask you about something. Understanding their intentions, I stayed here instead of going with him. Didn't you say that a woman tried to save Veerapandian and Aditha Karikalan didn't care? I said yes. Do you know who the ghost girl was trying to save? It is Nandini Devi, the youngest queen who is now the torch of Palvur Palace. If I had the power you just described, would I not have saved the life of the man I wanted to save? Why couldn't I? The bloodthirsty Aditha Karigalan did not fulfill their wish at the time. But I know what torture he has been going through for three years after that. How do you know, sir? Did he tell you? He had been suffering for three years. I only knew that something was gnawing at his heart. Ten days ago, on the first day of my departure for Elam, he opened his heart and told me that since. And what was that first? The desire to see the younger queen of Pavur has also entered my heart. Remember when you said that if you had been in the position of a Tithe Kari Kalar, you would have left Veerapandiyar alive because I asked him to. Remembers well. Is that true? Sure, goddess. Let's check it out. Sir. I have a doubt in my mind. Shall I say it? 
whatever they say in their golden voice my ears will delight, my soul will rejoice. I suspect that you are talking like this to test me. You are trying to spread a web for me by talking about the web of infatuation that I am spreading. You are trying to know my private parts. Parthipendra was startled. In the beginning, when he started speaking, he started with that thought. Then he forgot about it. The talk that started out as hypocrisy had really plunged him into the sea of infatuation. He was ashamed that he had thought so at first. Without showing it outwardly, Goddess. If I am tempted to test myself in such a way, let thunder fall on my head. He said. Oh. Don't say that, screamed Nandini. Why, Goddess? Why? From your great prince, another one, what's his name? Vandiyadevana. Yes, he is. He tried to get to know me very cunningly. From what you say, it looks like he's had a thunderbolt on his head. Unfortunately, the lightning did not fall on his head. Did it not fall on the ship he was standing on? Did not the danger that befell him, and the little prince as well? Pity. I feel sorry for the old young bratty. Two of her dearest in the world are dead at the same time. What a misfortune. Goddess. Who are the two? The two buses you mentioned. Ilay Abrati has a special wish for his brother, doesn't he? The world knows it. Another worthy of his love. Why it is a messenger sent by your great prince. Vandaya the Vanaya you mean. That's him. Chi Chi. On that powerful old brat, the braggart, the braggart, the overpreachy youth who rules the Chola Empire. Yes, she fell in love with the boy. That is why she sent him to Ceylon with a straw to escape the punishment of the evildoers. Alas! This old man insists that he is responsible for the prince's misfortune, when in fact it is Ilya Prati who is responsible. If she had not sent him with the straw. True, true. All this calamity never happened. You must convey this truth to my husband when he returns from the ship. If you do, you will be worthy of my thanks. Amini, is this a way to express your gratitude? Are there no other tasks you can assign me? Sir. There are a hundred ways to thank a ghost woman. Tell me two more of them. Aditya Kari Kaler had one such opportunity. He let it slip away. He thrashes about day and night. I will never make such a mistake. Is it true, sir? Are you a man who will do whatever a woman says to fulfill her wishes? It depends on which woman, goddess. Until yesterday I would have done nothing for the wishes of any woman I had seen. I would have laughed if I told you. Not so today. You tell me. If I had a hundred lives, I would sacrifice that much to fulfill their wishes. If I had a thousand kingdoms at my disposal, I would sacrifice that much for theirs. If you ask me to lose my kingdom forever, I will do it. If I ask you to forgive my mortal enemies, I will forgive you. If you ask me to bring the heads of my friends and lay them at their feet, I will do it again. When Parthipendra spoke like a madman, his body trembled from head to toe. The words that came out of his mouth were confused, lips twitched, teeth clenched, the fur stood on end, the sound of breathing sounded like the sound of a blacksmith's furnace. This transformation of Parthipendra will surprise the people. Why? If someone had told him, you're going to be like this on the first day, he wouldn't have believed it. In retrospect, it was surprising even to him. But this is not the only miracle about Parthibendra, a mystery about human nature. Even after so many geniuses have researched throughout the ages, we have not been able to fully understand the secret of the structure of the human body. How can we know the secret of the structure of the human heart? People who have been mired in guilt all their lives suddenly become zealous sealers one day, bhakti ecstasies prevail, God becomes a vessel of mercy, human society also understands incomparable charity. On the contrary, those who have long led a pure and unblemished life suddenly one day slip and fall. When they fall like that, they fall into the abyss itself. Nandini, 
who was listening to Parthipendra's passionate words, said, Enough sir. Enough. Stop. I am not going to force them to do anything so terrible. I am going to tell them something that will be happy for them and me.